Yeah, it's uh, December 5th, 2021, and this is my first catch-up blog, vlog since uh, May. Lots been going on, lots to talk about. I'm gonna do things a little differently. Uh, I'm gonna show you around the house, and we're gonna start at the main house at Ladera Vida, so you can see what it looks like, and then check out what the rental looks like. We're having a lot of work done. I was hoping to be done with that, uh, but it's not happening. So, where to start? So this is the front of the house, that's the driveway that comes in, and that's the front door. Two fountains, we got one there and one there. Obviously they're not working right now. Um, we're gonna have our gardener, Jose, comes in. He gets about 40 bucks a day to uh, come in and weed and stuff, he's been doing that. These trees were all cut down. They were up here standing over the brand new bodega and I was worried they were gonna fall onto it. So we got a crew in here, uh, not the same crew that built the bodega, but this is what the inside of the bodega looks like. There's uh, the motorcycle Eskimo and the tools and the fishing stuff that I haven't taken out in a while. And just storage, it's funny, you don't have anything until you have storage and then you have everything to store. But they built this bodega, did a really great job. I think I wrote about that and uh, included some pictures. We had a different crew come out, cut the trees down, and uh, now they're doing other work. So this is the front of the house, which is actually more or less the back of the house because it fronts up to this hill. And that hill is not only not ours, but it's also in the back of the house. Currently having iguana in the inside of the house which is pretty exciting. He's uh, in the roof. The roof doesn't connect to the uh, looks like to the walls, so they can slip in and out. He just makes a lot of noise. But there is the trampoline. And this hill, we hired Jose, hoping that he would use our weed whacker to um, clear this hill. I think I've shown pictures of this hill. And uh, he did it by hand with a machete. Two machetes, he would sharpen them every day, two days a week. And he came out and over this in this direction is uh, where we keep our compost and we put it out there and it disappears that is the green for hole four down there and then that greenhouse is our neighbor Janice's and that house there is a guest house they rent it out and a lot of a lot of people and what am I hearing back here I got some white winged doves fighting it out. So, over there is kind of like utility area. There's what we call the water closet where the water comes in and the water softener system that we had put in since we've been here. We've done a lot of work since we've been here. Satellite dish that we don't actually use but have not taken down. Might work on that. There's our Wi-Fi dish. That, uh, so our yard goes all the way to that tree over there. So big hill, which is great for rainy season because the water just dumps off. And there's a lot of drains coming through from the house and such. And then all that area to this wall is uh, property that we're gonna start gardening and stuff. Probably with Don Gabriel, he's the guy that cut the trees down, all those trees there. And uh, he's working on some steps and stuff, I'll show you in a bit. It's our septic tank, I'm gonna cover that in. Back of the house, there's Maggie's bathroom and then our closet and then the air conditioning for this side of the house. And yeah, so uh, just to update, um, Lakeside went fully remote and they lost all their English speaking teachers probably to La Paz. They opened La Paz school, opened up a school down here. And uh, so we pulled the girls because they were, they just had um, remote school in Spanish. So they all, got, they got pulled. Katrina started teaching them homeschool and proved that the public school systems in the United States suck. This is the back of the house. This is Katrina's gardening center and um, a camp propane or butane uh, burner that we have that we use to uh, fry some food in there. This is the pool house. Uh, the pool is right there and it is empty. Our pool pump strainer gasket broke and apparently they don't have one anywhere in Costa Rica. So rather than trying to wrangle with that, we're gonna get a new, we're gonna get a new pool pump, different kind, one that's pretty common here in Costa Rica. 
which is in the yard. And at the same time, we're gonna have them come in. Katrina is going to the United States next week, December 8th, I think. And uh, she's gonna pick up a, a new pool light. They're like a grand. Never knew they would be that much. And we're gonna have the guys come in and re-grout uh, re the tile and do some repairs to some stuff and just make it a whole lot better. So this is the back of the house. That Those plants right there, right there, our birds of paradise that's the shower this is the backyard usually very green in the rainy season gotta mow it at least once a week it's the dry season and it's gonna dry up it's gonna be awesome this is the back of the house like our patio area and again the empty pool our grill there's the kitchen over there the girls in there playing World of Warcraft we'll do do a tour of the house some other time when everybody's not home this is another rag. Bella likes to, Bella, one of the dogs, likes to uh, run away with the rags and chew on them and stuff. So the kitchen, the girls, if you can see them through the window, the hammock area, we don't really use that much. Becca's back patio. This is the driveway that goes to the front of the house. And Becca's side here. We got Don Gabriel put in this pad right here right here and um, we put that in so that we can uh, have a propane burner out here and just like fly foods and stuff and not really muck the gorilla so right up here I'll show you this in a little bit Don Gabriel's crew is putting in a storage tank a water storage tank for us if we have a water problem and there's the casita and right here these steps right here Don Gabriel put in I don't know you remember from the other photos that there were stairs that had this kind of loose gravel in it and they weren't really well defined due to erosion and such so he came in and he put uh, these stairs and that block in for I want to say fourteen hundred dollars including materials and labor and he comes out every day that he's here with his crew he comes out and waters this but these steps are pretty fabulous now. And uh, I want to get lighting for them because I work up here and there are nights where it gets dark and I have no idea what's going to be on the steps, scorpions and such. Scorpions love to hang out with me. But here's the back patio. We got some Christmas lights up if you can see them twinkling. Back patio of the casita. And this area where this red thing is, this red, I guess they were using it as a fire pit, it's uh, kind of nasty. We are going to have the same type of stone put down as a patio. Again, Don Gabriel's team is doing that, and that's going to look fabulous. But he did all these steps up, redid the one, the top one here. That's my uh, hummingbird feeder, they come and entertain me, and still have some left, good. It's like four or five regulars. North side of the casita, it's kind of a construction zone right now. We had all these trees cleared out. We had a lot of trees cut down by Don Gabriel. This area over here. And then uh, we had Jose cut away the uh, Limon Mandarin trees. And these things are sweet, but not to taste. They're sweet to have these. I have these grown like I put them in water and uh, we make margaritas and stuff out of them. It's, a, it's just great to have the source right there. So. And this is the front of the casita. Again, it's kind of a war zone. And uh, there's the water softening system we put in. So the Water line is going to run across here and then down this way. He's got all this stone that he's got in already. He's not only putting in a water or a water storage tank on that block right there, but he's also going to put a deck in. He did the other day, this past week, he did this step here, put in this stone wall, and put in this frame. It's going to be a patio out here. In the back area for guests like you when you come out to get away from everything to just kind of come on and hang out and that's going to be the pad for the water tower 
uh, and we're going to dress it up with some vegetation and such. So we'll go in in a little bit. I want to show you the uh, I want to show you the landscape that we got and kind of give you an update on what's been going on. So this is the top of the cul-de-sac. This is not our property. I've put it out before. I love to come up here. I actually ride the moto up here. Uh, I bought that back in November. Not November. I bought that in August. Um, been riding it. There's a couple of crazy videos on the YouTube channel if you want to see how not to ride a motorcycle in Costa Rica in the uh, the neighborhood. We have dirt roads out here. We don't have paved yet. So this is the casita. I'm sorry. This is the cul-de-sac by the casita. This is facing north. And up there is our uh, Wi-Fi tower and also our storage tank. And so that would be the east. My neighbor Scott, he is a retired lawyer from Maryland. Poker there sometimes. Fun guy, good family. And his wife, uh, Mar, she is really helpful with us. She's a realtor out here. She's really helpful with us. She speaks Spanish. It's, I think it's the first language and she's helped us coordinate with Jose and Marta, the housekeeper, and Don Gabriel. Uh, just looking over, I mean, I get this view and they just cut all this stuff down this past week. I guess they do it for fire prevention type of thing. So this is the west. This is where I have all the, uh, all the sunset pictures from. And that's lot 18. That is lot 18, that is lot 17, and that is lot 16. And I was kind of hoping when uh, they started clearing that we would be getting neighbors. Uh, I do like my solitude, I think if you know me, you know that. But uh, just have neighbors come out, kind of help each other out. Uh, we recently lost the vice president of the HOA. Uh, he had a heart attack and passed away very sadly exercising and the neighbors got together and we're looking at maybe getting a defib and we took a CPR class together in Coco, Playa's del Coco and um, yeah, so you know kind of looking out for each other and stuff and that's pretty much it so just as an update um, like I said Lakeside went remote we pulled the girls from there Katrina June. June we returned to New York. We picked up four cats. Oliver sadly had a tumor and didn't have a lot left in her, so uh, we put her to sleep. We're up there. We saw on state with her. Jasmine. She's only coming to visit soon, but with COVID and the restrictions, and she's got school and she works herself to death, basically. Um, it's probably going to be a while until Jasmine picks us up on our open offer. Um, we brought back the four cats. Uh, August, I think I bought a motorcycle. It's just a little too hundred, but it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm not planning to travel far, maybe do some moto camping in the area. My buddy uh, Anibal, who helped coordinate our, or help broker the purchase of our Toyota. Um, Nativos Car Rental. That's nativoscar.com. And um, he's going to have some camper vehicles available, like, like you know, rooftop camping, that kind of thing. I'm not sure what the equipment is, but I'm going to help him with doing a video. And uh, we're going to see what he's got. And he is booked through March right now. It's hard to find cars in the world right now due to COVID. And uh, he was able to find 15 of them, and he is booked up through. March, which I think is fabulous. Unfortunately, he's also a dairy farmer, but he's going to be shutting that down and not making cheese anymore. Which kind of sucks because his cheese is pretty fabulous, but he's thinking about raising rodeo animals. I look forward to kind of taking the opportunity to go to Costa Rica rodeo. Uh, what else are we doing? So we brought the four cats back. Uh, July, I started my doctorate program. I love it. Uh, Aspen University. I'm in the industrial organizational psychology class class is program uh, it's really fitting for what I experienced in um, as a police officer in a dysfunctional organization with the Rose City uh, PD um, a lot 
lot to talk about with that. And I'm going to get back on my blogs. I've got a couple of ones that I'd written while I was still there that are coming out. Uh, but I've got some stuff to say. I mean, some things that have happened recently, some things that have happened to personnel. Um, I'm staying in touch with the guys and the girls there and uh, hoping that they take me up on the opportunity to come out and uh, show me the two-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath to see the pool just a short walk away. And the beach is nine miles from here, either, you know, the summertime, which is now. December, January, February, March, April, or in the winter time, which we call the rainy season, which is May through November. You know, come see us. It's going to be great. A lot of stuff to do out here. Um, but that course is great. I'm 20% through. I started one class and I started taking two classes at a time. And I'm cruising through it. I'm having a great time. Two classes, most of my classes uh, have more than just me in it, unlike my master's. So it's a lot of fun to get through. Really getting a different work perspective. A lot of my uh, classmates are educators, uh, superintendents, that kind of thing. And it's just really good to see what a different industry looks like. Uh, the really been eye -opening. Uh, yeah, so I'm 20% done with the program and just cruising through it. Uh, we've developed a routine. Mondays are like my days off. I usually mow the lawn then, except I'm going to have that day open during the uh, dry season. Uh, Tuesdays, I do my work for Aspen. I set up my, I grade my classes and get into the discussion posts and such. Wednesday, I do the discussion posts for my two classes. Thursday, I try to get a paper done. Friday, I try to get a paper. Friday, we do shopping. It's our day out. We go shopping. We have a routine. It's usually uh, Pequeno Mundo, which means uh, small world. And then uh, Walmart, Price Mart. But we'll hit McDonald's for lunch. We might go to which is similar to like if you remember Sibley's or you know, like a JC Penney's. Uh, we'll go to the Dewitt Center, which is like Home Depot, and uh, we've made friends there. They like kind of know when I'm coming. Uh, so that's our routine, and then we'll get some food out for the kids and come back and we'll groceries and I'll we'll catch up on some stuff. jumped and uh, took the jump, I guess, and we went and uh, found a community uh, injection site and we got our first shot. Our second ones are scheduled for January. Um, not really looking forward to it, not feeling overly great after the first one, but, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, they were supposed to come out with QR codes and the, the Costa Rican courts ruled those were unconstitutional and now they're coming out as optional. They've got a website for it, so we're going to look into it. Uh, they want to do it for the kids too, but I'm really, really not looking for that. Uh, October, October we did a border run. We took everybody up to Venice Bocas, which is uh, Costa Rica on the border, about an hour and a half from here with Nicaragua. We parked the car, we checked out of Costa Rica, we walked across the border, we checked into Nicaragua, checked out of Nicaragua, and then walked back to um, Costa Rica, checked in. The only problem we had with a little bit was the immigration lady coming back in until she saw our appointments for um, our immigration, our immigration appointments. She saw that we are applying to be residents, and that really changed it. it literally from night to day, like, oh, I'm going to give you a hard time to, oh, I'm just going to stamp your passports and give you 88 days, and uh, have a nice day, type of thing. So I think, I think they like the effort. No, not everybody's here to reach off. We do see expats come here to, not only for the cheaper way of living, but just to kind of, just kind of like, not participate or to participate as little as they have to in the government. Like, when we become temporary residents, we're going to be paying into the government medical, which we will get, but at the same time, we'll be paying into that for everybody else. And some people just don't want to do that, you know? So, um, November, week of Thanksgiving, we went to La Fortuna, which is where we first went when Katrina and I first came here, except we couldn't see the Arnold volcano because it was covered in clouds. 
So Katrina drove because Annabelle rented us the only car he had left, which was a clutch, and I'm not clutch competent. So she drove, and so kind of some wacky roads, but not really as bad as the first time we were here. We get in there, we eat lunch at a burger place in town, and Becca looks up and says, there's the volcano. Clouds have broken, and we got to see the volcano. And I don't want to get too mushy on it, but it was kind of spiritual to see like the jagged edge of the top of the volcano. Walked around Fortuna. I threw one of those videos in uh, YouTube of just walking around. We stayed at uh, Tif Tifataki Resort. Um, it's like a bird watching resort. They took us on a really nice night tour right in the area. We saw some amazing frogs. I'll try to post some of those pictures in this blog, uh, in this video, towards the end. And the dogs have arrived, and I'm hearing something. roaring of a jet engine, but way too close. Um, but way too loud for where it is. So yeah, we did that and we drove down into San Jose with the intent to look at furniture stores. And it's Black November for Costa Rica where there's no taxes and deals and stuff. And traffic was just murder. So we were supposed to stay at like a bed and breakfast. She didn't have the room prepared. We stayed at a Holiday Inn in an area of San Jose called Escazú, I think that's the pronunciation. And it was more modern than any place I had seen in the state of Connecticut. Uh, just the mall and the parking garage and the, the hotel set up and just the restaurants around and stuff, just very nicely done, very modern. Uh, so those of you that think that Costa Rica is nothing but uh, mud huts and uh, you know beachcombers, it's a very modern, very progressive uh, country. So we did that, uh, we drove back, we got onto Highway 1, which is the Intercontinental Highway, and um, Inter-American, it's the Inter-American Highway. And uh, yeah, um, it took us all day to get back home because they're doing construction on it, and they place speed bumps in the highway in the area of the construction, so it slows you down. Next week, uh, Katrina's going back to Connecticut to do a border run because she has to renew her Connecticut driver's license and then she's going to come back with that and she'll be the one driving. And hopefully, January 22nd uh, is our immigration date. We get approved for temporary residency. I don't have to leave the country again to drive. Not, not, none of us do. That's the only reason we leave is to uh, get the new visa stamp on our passport so we can drive. We were stopped uh, this past Friday by the police. And they were checking to see if we had valid driver's licenses, which we did, of course. But I also slipped the uh, you know, police retirement ID in there, and they kind of looked at that and sent us on our way. Um, I don't know if it was because our IDs and our passports were good or because, you know, just some professional courtesy. So Katrina's running back there, and hopefully in January, um, we will with uh, our, um, our temporary residency. And I'm gonna take you in and show you the casita. This is the front of the casita. Like I said, it's a construction zone right now. We got a water uh, storage tank going in. It's funny, you pay for a home inspection here. And um, I don't know, really know if it's worth it. Uh, I don't know if there's a standard for it. There's a, on the, by the water closet, what we call the water closet, the water softening system, down in the uh, carport at the main house, there's a uh, cut tiles with a handle in the middle. And we never knew what that was, but we figured, you know, it was like hookups or like where the water came into the house. Well, Don Gabriel and his son pulled that up to see what it was, to see if that's where the hookups were so they can put the water in there. And it turns out there's a storage tank in there for a sprinkler system which obviously the home inspection guy didn't do. So do you spend 500 bucks to get a home inspection in Costa Rica? Or do you not do it and just kind of risk it? Either way, you're kind of risking it. Like, what do you do? I don't know. Um, so this is the front of the casita. And I cannot express enough that if you need to get away for any reason, 
primarily if you're a first responder, dispatcher, firefighter, volunteer, paid, doesn't matter. Uh, medic, American Ambulance, AMR, uh, Occam Ambulance, whatever. Contact me. Pura Vida AF290. P U R A V I D A AF290 at gmail.com. Or link up with. Uh, comments or whatever in the uh, the video so come down here this is still a work in progress inside as well we have not changed any of the furniture but this opens up into the main living area TV we actually don't have any TVs in our house for the lunch TV Katrina just had the kitchen redone it's a brand new stove brand new refrigerator eating area here AC for this area sink Got a water softener system. This is the guest bedroom, which is fully set, ready for you to come, ready to go. Bedroom, TV, AC. This looks out at the sunset. We keep the drapes closed to keep it out. We get non-stinging bees here all the time. That's what the bed is up there. Little patio area where you can look out. We get the Christmas lights if you can see them. Shower, toilet, walk-in closet where you can put all your stuff. Plenty of hangers, extra pillows, sink, brand new. Katrina had all this, this stuff done. All freshly painted. Uh, mom stayed here and then my sister-in-law Beth and Meg stayed here. From them. Scorpion, there was a scorpion, but uh, that took care of it. Short hallway where we have the old fridge that still runs, so we didn't get rid of it. We just keep beer and stuff in there. Washer dryer, kind of a utility room, utility sink that I didn't have Katrina replace, and she got a little upset, but brand new electrical put in right there. That's the box. Uh, so. Little storage area, kind of a cutout here, and that's the half bath. This is the master bedroom. Um, I'm using it as an office. That's where all the magic happens for me. We uh, are going to put a king size bed in here. We just have not done it yet. If you need it, you can call pay. Look, I really need to get away, and I'm bringing the wife and kids. Bring my husband and uh, the children. I'm bringing my parents. Let me know. We'll have that done before you get down here. AC, all of them have been refurbed and uh, have blown cold. Kind of a, a similar setup to the bathroom. This one's a little bit better. Um, little, it's still a little different. Bathroom, shower, new sink setup, walk in closet. I wear these shirts for uh, PowerPoints and videos I make for the school, both as a student and as faculty. Lots of storage for you to come in and stay at. This has got a, uh, it's gonna get bright, I'm sorry. This has got a view out to the uh, back patio. And again, there's gonna be a patio there. You can't see because of the sunlight. None of this stuff will be in here if you come down to the master bedroom. Uh, this has got a great view out here and I have um, my bird feeder. So that's it. Uh, inside of the house will be in the next video. That's the update. And I'm telling you. So before I sign off and end this video uh, and go edit it so I can get it out, um, my blogs are so far behind. I just want to extend it to everybody out there. If you need a place to come down and stay, let me know. The air, the um, airport code is L I R for Liberia. They've renamed it the Juanacaste International Airport. It used to be called the. Um, Liberia International Airport, but they wanted to include all of Juanacaste. Come down, two bedroom, two and a half bath, completely free. Uh, I'll pick you up at the airport. We'll work out whatever you need to do with a car either before then. Uh, contact me if you need to know what you need to get. You need to have COVID travel insurance, which is relatively cheap for as long as you're down here. Um, passport, obviously, you don't need a visa uh, to come into Costa Rica, but they will give you a stamp when you get here, your visa stamp. Um, we can set up activities. You don't have to see me. You can hang out with me if you want to and just talk about what you got going on and 
and just just to get things off your chest or just to hang out uh, see kind of a different perspective of uh, life after police work and or any emergency services and um, yeah so come down if you just need some time off and I want to extend that to everybody I know that like you know people that work in the hospitals first responders have been or frontline workers have been kind of pushed out if you're a manager at Walmart if you're a clerk if you're a student that just needs to get away for a little bit contact me uh, this is primarily for first responders but we open it up to everybody because we know that everybody needs some of that mental healthness and is that a word healthness but come down hang out live the Pura Vida life the pure life for a little bit and uh, recharge and then you know get ready to get back into the fray again Pura Vida AF290 at gmail.com I will put it in the description of this video and I will put it at the end of this video in like a little title thing contact me I'll get back to you as soon as I can and uh, which is usually within like a day or so and we'll work it out hope to see you soon